Okay, here we are. We have done so much already, but yet so little. We have so much more to go. But today is a moment, a big moment. If you were waiting to do something real, <laughs> to really sink your teeth into programming, this is the moment we're really going to do that. We are going to talk about in this video variables. Now, why do we need a variable? Well, well first, where are we so far even? We've, we've kind of got the idea we can write these functions, issue these commands to draw stuff to the screen based on numbers. We now understand that there's a flow where the program begins, that it runs and it loops over time. We also understand that we can vary what we draw each time, right? We could say, hey, draw something at the mouse location. But is this really what we want to do? Let's give ourselves a new goal. And you thought we were going to have an exciting goal, and I, in many ways, perhaps it is. But okay, so let's take a look for a second. This is ultimately, I'm going to run this little application that was made in processing. Take a look at this beautiful processing sketch. It's so nice and just cute and simple and fun and, well, whatever. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so here we go. Um, what's happening? There's a white circle, and it is bouncing around the screen. This is our goal now. Now, the first thing we should notice about this is I'm not moving the mouse, right? I don't have the mouse here trying to like move it around. It is moving autonomously. But we know we need to vary where we draw at each frame. Draw it here, draw it there, draw it here, draw it there, draw it here, draw it there, right? Draw it at this xy, then this xy, then this xy. We need some mechanism for dynamically storing, for storing the dynamic value, which is its location. This is a variable. Mouse x is a variable. It's a, a word, a name that stands for the x location of the mouse. Now we need a new variable, circle x we'll call it, that stands for the current location of this circle. But if I go into a processing sketch, and this isn't, um, this is not the code for that bouncing ball, but this is the code we're going to start with, right? We have this we have this sketch that all it does is draw a circle at 0, 180 over and over again. What if I go and type in, right, if I go and type in mouse x, this is where we've been, right, no problem, now it's where the mouse is. Uh -huh. <laughs> if I go and type in circle x, first of all, it doesn't turn pink. Processing has no idea what circle x is. And if I run it, it says at the bottom, can't find anything can't, cannot find anything named circle X. The saddest error message ever to happen in our life. Processing, it can't, just doesn't know. It needs our help. It needs us to say, this is what circle X is. This is how I'm going to use it. Go and be happy and draw your circles at circle X. So that's really where we're going to go. What is a variable? A variable is, okay, technically speaking, a variable is, let's say, a computer has this thing called RAM. This is going to be my... Brilliant drawing of the computer's RAM. RAM stands for <laughs> random access memory. It's the memory of the computer. You, some, you might think of it as the brain of the computer, though that's quite flawed in many ways. But it's a place where information is stored. Somewhere in the computer's memory is the value of mouse x, right? The computer is always storing where the mouse currently is because lots of programs need access to that. What we want to do is create our own variable. Mouse x is a built-in variable. We can think of this as a built-in. Oh, I'm totally off. See, I, I need a new, um, I need a new uh, a piece of tape to show me where I can draw. But mouse x is known as a built-in variable, meaning processing just knows what it is almost magically. Of course, that was implemented by somebody. What we need now is a pointer to some place in the computer's memory that we're going to call circle x, that we're going to store some value. And what is this? We're going to call this a user-defined variable. So we learned about built-in variables. I forgot to turn the timer on. It's been a few minutes so far. And now um, we want to talk about user-defined variables. We are going to make up our own variable. And if we can make up one variable, that means we can make up 1,000 variables, 10,000 variables. We can start to create enormously complex programs that are storing vast amounts of information for tons of things. But we're going to start with one variable for one circle's location. OK, so 
Whenever we're going to use a user-defined variable in our program, again, why to store information, we talk about this, data of a program, locations of things, colors of things, a score, a level, uh, all sorts of stuff, we need to do this in three steps. Uh, where am I gonna do this? The first step, hmm, ah, we'll just do this over here. We're going to say is we have to declare the variable. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Declare that our intention is to have a variable. The second step is to initialize the variable, meaning we're going to have a variable and this is going to be its first value, the value that it's holding onto, that it's storing when the program begins. And the third step use the variable. Now, technically speaking, I would suggest, I would argue that this third step is optional. I mean, it's all optional. None of us have to do any of this if we don't want to or don't need to in our lives. But certainly, if we've decided, we've made the choice that we're going to declare a variable and initialize it, it would make sense to use that variable. It's kind of like if a variable is declared and initialized in the forest, but is it used? Does it make a pixel on the screen? I don't know where that's going. But, um, but, 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 but certainly, we cannot use a variable without having declared it. And there are some cases where, you know, well, let's not get into that. Let's just, I, you know, so sometimes, <laughs> I would like to just sort of start over, but I just, I'm, I'm on a mission which is to just record no matter what these, uh, these, these lessons. So, um, you know, also there are some instances where we don't have to initialize the variable. Maybe it just gets a default value by accident, but I think it's very good practice if we're going to say we're going to use a variable to always know and declare and initialize exactly what that first value is going to be. Okay, so these are our three steps. <laughs> we're doing this very slowly, right? We know we want eventually to be able to do something like this, to draw our ellipse at circle X. Draw our ellipse at circle X. And circle X is our variable. This is, in, in a way, step three. This is using the variable. But we missed the two, most, more, the two important steps we need if we're using the variable. We missed declare and initialize. OK, so how do we, let's start with declare. How do we declare a variable? Well, we say, uh, we, written proclamation, this is our variable. We have to give it two things. We have to give it a type and a name, followed by a semicolon. So this is the syntax for declaring a variable. A type followed by a name. Now, what is this thing we're saying is a type? We mean by that data type. Now, some languages, and in fact, this is perhaps one thing about writing and processing, which is Java, which makes getting started a little bit harder, is that it's a strictly typed language. Meaning when you say you're going to use a variable, I need to say, I'm going to use a variable of this type, meaning a number, a bunch of, you know, a, a, a string of characters, um, all sorts of possibilities. A lot of languages allow you to just say, hey, there's a variable, put this stuff in it. You know, you don't need to know what type it is. You'll know what type it is when I give you the value, it'll be of this type. But we have a strictly typed language, so we need to always declare the type. What are some possible types? Int is a possible type, meaning integer, or a whole number like negative 3, 0, 14, 291, etc. That is a possible type. Float is a possible type, meaning a decimal number, a floating point number, a decimal number, something like 2.3 Three, one, seven, that's a great, that's a lovely, one of my favorite floats. Uh, negative 0 0.111113, right? These are all possible floats. And you know what? There's a lot of other data types too. There's car for a character, byte, which is a value between 0 and 255. I could keep going. But we don't really need to worry ourselves with all the possible types. You can look them up in the processing reference. We're going to start just by thinking of two possibilities, int or float. This will kind of get us get us going. I mean, the truth of the matter is when we're beginning in this beginning process of learning to program graphics and processing, all we really need is float. And we'll see that in a moment. But um, for now, let's think about int and float. And let's start with integer. So type, the type of our variable, int, 
And now we need a name. So what is that name? That name can be absolutely anything your heart desires. Um, striped kitty cat, that's the name of my variable. Uh, Cleopatra, that's the name of my variable. Uh, uh, blueberry pancakes, that's the name of my variable. You see right away, it can be anything you want. But most of the time, you want a variable name that, that works with what it is you're using it for. So we know our intention is to create this variable that is going to be used to store the x location of our circle. So we're going to pick the variable name circle x. We might have picked just the name x. There are very few rules in terms of what names you can and cannot use. Uh, you must start, your, your variable names can have letters and numbers in them, but you cannot start with a number. Uh, other things are the convention is to always have your variable name be lowercase. And uh, the other thing you probably want to do is avoid using words that are obviously keywords for other things in processing. Like perhaps you don't want your variable name to be setup or draw or mouse x, for example, because those are reserved essentially for other things in processing. But circle x is a perfectly lovely variable name. It makes us very happy and it's not too long to type. It says what it's doing. It's an integer. We're in good shape. So now we can walk over to our program and we need to figure out where do, we, where do we put this variable declaration? Well, the answer to that question right now at this moment for us is going to be at the top of our program. So the, true, the truth is we're going to see as we create more and more complex programs, variable declarations can happen in all sorts of places. But for now, we're going to say, hey, all the variables we intend to use they all become, they all are, de they're all declared at the top of the program. My list of my variables, circle x, circle y, circle width, circle height, circle speed, all these things that I might start using to store the data of how this circle is going to move and be drawn, they would all be up here at the top. Okay, so that is step one. Step two is initialize the variable. We need to give that variable an initial value. Um, this, by the way, is a new kind of line of code. We, something I didn't really mention. I really feel like today I'm totally just talking to myself. I'm going to check this as a recording. <sighs> but um, something that, I, that, that you might have uh, noticed <laughs> is that we've been writing lines of code. All of our lines of code have actually been function, have been function calls. This is a kind of line of code that we have been writing. Uh, line 150, 200, 100, right? This is a function call. Function name, argument, semicolon. We are about to learn about a new kind of line of code that we can write. So far, all of our programs have only had function calls. Size, background, line, fill, stroke. We are going to write a line of code known as an assignment operation. An assignment operation is something equals something, semicolon. We are going to assign the value of something to some other values. And that's what we do when we initialize a variable. Circle x equals 50. We are assigning the value of circle x. We are assigning 50. We are, we are setting circle x equal to 50. We are assigning. I'm trying to have trouble. I'm trying to have trouble using the word assign in the sentence here. I'm sure like, you could just pause the video and be like, here's what it is. Um, but we are assigning circle x's value to 50. Okay? So um, this may seem like so obvious, but it's sort of important to realize that we're not, we're not sort of asking, like, is circle x equal to 50? We're not calculating something. Circle x. We're just saying whatever is over here, store that value in 50. And in fact, we could have done, we can do in assignment operations, mathematical calculations here. So I could say 50 plus 5 times 2, right? Now, why would I do that? I would have just written 60 if I wanted to do that. But we're going to start to see sometimes you might want to have an assignment operation with a more complex thought. OK, but I digress a little bit, as I am apt to do here. And we are now, this is our initialization. We are writing an assignment operation. The uh, um, circle x is set to the value 50. So let's go look at where we want to write that line of code in our program. OK. We want circle x to begin its life with the value 50. Look at the flow of our program. 
We have a declared variable, setup happens once, draw happens over and over again. We want to initialize circle x's value in setup. That's where we'll give it its first value. Circle x equals 50. We run this program. Oh my goodness, this is super amazing and wonderful. We have a user-defined variable. We declared it. We gave it a type. We gave it initial value. Now we're using it and the circle is at the value 50. This is going to open up a huge amount of possibilities. This is fantastic. Okay, a bit, oh, that's probably uh, making weird sounds in the microphone. Okay, so uh, a bit, of, <laughs> again, uh, any questions? When I do this live, you can ask a question. Okay, so um, I, I want to mention, there's a few things we need to mention here. Number one is, um, look, ah, <laughs> look, these were, we, we separated these two steps. We declared this variable in set, uh, at the top of our program. We initialized it in setup. And as we see, we're using the variable, right, where we said ellipse, circle x, comma, et cetera. We're doing that in draw. So this is sort of like a really nice, simple scenario. It's just as simple as it gets. Declare the variable, give an initial value, draw something at that value. But the truth of the matter is the, these, the, how these things are happening is going to be a lot more flexible as we look at more complex examples. Now, let me um, say a couple things here. One is, one thing that I'll say is, it, it, you know, this, um, these first two steps can in most cases be combined into one line of code, right? I don't need to say int circle x and then circle x equals 50. I can write this all out as, so steps one and two combined, this is what you're going to find you're doing a lot, is int a circle x equals 50, right? So this is just doing all of that in one step, declaring that I have a variable named circle x of type int and its initial value is 50. Great. Now, so now we've seen that. Um, that's one thing that I wanted to say. That was the, that's one thing that I wanted to say. Um, okay, so let's, uh, we can change that in the, you know, the thing is though, You can do that. I kind of like it this way because, you know, I'm the anal retentive processing programmer apparently. But there are some scenarios where um, you want to do something more with your code that's, that's happening in setup and uh, you need to actually initialize the value separately from declaring it. This obviously is not that case. Okay, so where are we? I'm, 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 somebody, um, uh, again, will um, please download this and edit. I think you probably take three or four minutes out of this video where I lose my train of thought. But, okay, where are we doing? We want to have the, that circle move. That's what we're going to look at in the next video. We are going to take this circle and start to move it, start to assign new values to it and draw it. We're going to look at how we can use random to do all sorts of other things. We're going to start to see what happens when we manipulate the value of a variable in draw. So what I would suggest to you as a little exercise, I mean, this was kind of a long explanation just of the basics of what a variable is and setting it up. Um, tr go to your program, make, set yourself up with a simple sketch, a sketch that has, you know, one or two shapes um, and think of what the parameter of that shape is, its location, its size, its color, and see if you can start to declare some variables. Make two or three variables at the top of your program, set the, initialize those variables, use those variables when you draw those shapes, and run it. Make sure you have no syntax errors. See if you can get used to that. Now, we didn't do floats. We didn't actually look at, we can have a variable that's of type color, which if you look through the processing examples, you'll see some of that. Um, so I, that's something I should probably fill in in a video at some point. Um, but um, in the next video, we're going to start to see a bit more about manipulating the, the um, values of variables in draw um, by moving that circle and also by using random. Okay, uh, thanks, and I'm going to stop this now.